Welcome back to God Hockey, or should I say welcome to the very first edition of what I think I'm going to call Thought Hockey, where I take a look at whether it's a debate about who's the greatest, whether this goal should have gone in or if this shot should have been saved. And we really think about it a little and and see. Recently, I engaged in a bit of a debate about whether or not Terry Sawchuk or Martin Brodeur is the greatest goalie in NHL history. I think no matter what, before and after this conversation that I was having, I, I think I'm still just going to say it's Sawchuk because I don't really see a reason why I shouldn't say it. I just, you know, Terry Sawchuk never played when I was alive. Terry Sawchuk and I were never even alive at the same time. But I think I can anecdotally take what people have said about him. I can look at some of the numbers and the stats and things like that and just say that, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and just agree. Terry's the number one guy, and that's good enough for me. Now, for this particular argument that was taking place, it was a debate over Martin Brodeur and Terry Sachuk. So it's certainly two of the guys who you would think to have in the conversation when you are talking about the greatest of all time. What someone had brought up in their defense of why Sawchuk was better was that Martin Brodeur played in an era where goal scoring was very low and that Terry played in an era where games were commonly, I believe the, the score that he exampled was eight to six. Now, I understand that's probably a good deal of hyperbole in there somewhere. So I'm going to let them off the hook for that one. But we're really missing out a lot of the facts if we're just going to say, hey, Martin Berder played in the trap era and Terry Sawchuk played before masks. So goals were just going in left, right, and center. So I took a look at both Terry and Marty's careers. They're both among the leaders in a lot of categories. So Terry Sawchuk played in 972 games, of which he recorded 103 shutouts. So that's a shutout about every 10 games he played. Now, even in his early career, it was obviously much higher. He was putting up uh, double digits for the, the, the first five or six seasons that he played. Brodeur was able to beat that. In his career, he finished off with 125 in 1,266 games played. Terry and Marty were Calder recipients as Rookie of the Year. Marty won four Vesna trophies, which is the same number that Terry won. So that's pretty even. But what we do have to factor in is that when Terry Sachuk was in the NHL, the Vesna Trophy just went to the goalie who allowed the fewest goals in the league. And it wasn't until much later on that the Jennings Trophy was added to account for the lowest goals against, which was usually given out to two goalies, depending on games played um, many years, there is only one recipient. And the Vesna was then the, the best goalie in the league that's voted on by whichever group happened to be voting on it for that year. It's currently the GMs. So when we look at Jennings trophies, which again is the same as what the Vesna used to be, Marty's got five and Terry's got four. I know the first argument you want to make is, yeah, but Marty played for those Jacques Lemaire New Jersey Devils and faced no shots and they didn't give up much. And he was playing in such a low scoring period of the game. Well, let's take a look at that. In the 94-95 season, Martin Brodeur and the New Jersey Devils won their first Stanley Cup. That was the lockout shortened season. So maybe we won't use that as a prime example, but I thought it was good because again, they won the cup goal scoring that season was 5.97 goals per game. So when you factor both teams scored about three goals per game. Now, probably the best statistical season Marty played was 96-97 or 97-98. Both those years, he had an obscene 1.88 and 1.89 goals against average. He won 37 in 43 games during those seasons. In 96-97, NHL average goal scoring per game was 5.87 goals against. 
and in the following season was 5.26, so a noticeable drop. Now, goal scoring did go up and down a little over the next few years. In 2002, it had dropped to 5.24. By 2004, goal scoring dropped all the way down to 5.14 goals per game. So you can see there really was a downward trend. So let's take a look at Terry Sawchuk's first few seasons in the NHL. In the 1950-51 season, a season that saw Terry Sawchuk record 11 shutouts, Goal scoring average per game was 5.42. Now, that's still a little bit above some of Marty's better seasons and the seasons that followed leading up to the lockout. But if we look at that first 94-95 season, that's a half a goal a game less. In 51-52, another double-digit shutout year for Sawchuk, NHL goal scoring fell all the way to 5.19 goals per game. Now we're looking at pre-lockout era goals against. But wait, there's more. In 1952-53, goal scoring fell all the way to 4.79 goals per game on average. And if you were hoping for a bounce back in 53-54, you got it. It went all the way up to 4.8. Yeah, not very much it was still well below any season that Berger played in the NHL. The 54-55 and 55-56 saw goal scoring come back above five per game at 5.04 and 5.06. In 55-56, Terry moved from Detroit to Boston, and they finished out of the playoffs only winning 23 games. Now, nine of those 23 victories were Terry Sawchuk shutouts. That's a pretty impressive stat. So if we're looking at things based on the standpoint of like who scored what and when, I don't really think there's much of a comparison you can make. Uh, Terry played in an era with the same or even less some years goal scoring than Martin Berdur ever did. Now, did Marty play for a defensive juggernaut that didn't allow much? Maybe, but I think if you look at some of the numbers, you'll see that probably wasn't quite as stingy as you may have thought. And certainly he definitely had something to do with the success. But if we're going to bring that up, we should note that the 1950s Detroit Red Wings were a juggernaut of a team, especially in the regular season. They put up some terrifying numbers. In that 50-51 season I mentioned earlier, Detroit scored 236 goals over the season. They finished first in the league. The next highest scoring team was Toronto, more than 20 goals less over the 70 games that Detroit got. The other four teams were all around 50 goals fewer than Detroit. So they really took it to the league. And when we look at 51-52, we still see Detroit with 215 goals, 20 more than Toronto, who was second that season. Detroit really was the dominant team of that era. And it wasn't until 1955-56 with Terry playing for the Boston Bruins, that Montreal took first place from the Red Wings. All in all, I think personally, I'm still giving Terry the nod as number one of all time. I might not even have Brodeur second. I think there's another two, maybe three guys I might even put ahead of him. Let me know in the comments below. Did I miss something? Maybe you just want to tell me that I'm wrong. It's neither of these guys. Maybe you think Patrick was the best. Maybe you think it's Dominic Hassan. Maybe you're going to throw Jacques Plante in there or Ken Dryden. I don't think there's a wrong answer here. I think there's been a lot of great goalies over the years, and it's fun to have these debates. I hope you enjoyed this look inside the numbers on the Brodeur versus Sawchuk debate, and we'll see you next time on Thought Hockey.